In a new and intriguing episode of Military History, we explore a lesser known but profoundly impactful facet of the Third Reich, the control of sexuality. When the Nazis came to power, they not only transformed German culture but also embarked on a crusade to control the most intimate aspects of their citizens' lives. Their goal was clear, to reverse the declining birth rate by any means necessary. From peculiar incentives to strictly monitored programs, the regime spared no resource. But at what cost? Sexual repression not only marginalized but could also lead individuals directly to concentration camps, facing death from starvation, disease, or execution. Prepare to unveil the dark secrets of how control over sexuality became a tool of power and terror in the hands of the Nazis. Are you ready for this journey through time? In the vibrant 1920s, Germany experienced an era of sexual liberation, a cultural revolution where traditional values began to fade. However, this freedom did not go unnoticed and soon attracted fierce criticism from the more conservative sectors of society, including the emerging National Socialist Party. Using an intense propaganda campaign, the Nazis blamed the Weimar Republic regime for the alarming decrease in the post-World War. I birth rate, labeling the new trends as degenerate. Upon rising to power in 1933, the Third Reich implemented a vision of sexuality that, despite being oppressive and rigid, was full of contradictions. It was a time of extremes, where the cultural battle became a battleground for the future of Germany. How did this transition affect German society? Don't miss this fascinating analysis in our new episode. The enigmatic world of sexuality and love in the Third Reich, where traditional values were promoted, yet surprising contradictions were lived. Adolf Hitler, a central figure of Nazism, projected an image of chastity and purity, keeping his relationship with Eva Braun in the strictest secrecy. This silence was not only personal but strategic. Hitler wanted to be seen as a leader uninterested in romance, wholly dedicated to Germany, his true love. This stance also had a political objective, to maintain the support of the female population, which could be affected by knowing of his romantic relationship. At the same time, the Nazi regime imposed heterosexuality as a moral obligation, essential for procreation and strengthening the Aryan race. Under a facade of sexual conservatism, Hitler's regime promoted the relationship between pleasure and patriotism, linking the act of procreating with service to a greater cause. In an effort to reinforce this vision, the traditional family structure composed of a father, a mother, and several children was idealized. The Goebbels family, close to Hitler himself, was exalted as the model to follow. In the newspapers of the time, images of their children playing in the garden or helping with household chores adorned the pages, displaying a charming and accessible idol. These representations not only sought to inspire but also to establish an emotional and social standard that German citizens were expected to aspire to emulate. Dive into the complex relationship between propaganda, family policy, and social control at the heart of the Third Reich. Although the Nazi regime projected an image of strict sexual conservatism, in practice it encouraged premarital relationships among the youth. This apparent contradiction had a clear purpose, to increase the birth rate at all costs. Within youth organizations such as the Hitler Youth and the League of German Girls, which grouped young people between the ages of 10 and 18, encounters between boys and girls were not only common but also encouraged by the leaders of the movement. The intention was that, by starting early in sex, the youth would quickly contribute to the demographic growth of the Reich. In the 1930s, a notable increase in teenage pregnancies led to an unusual government propaganda campaign. This bold and controversial campaign praised the role of single mothers, elevating them to a fundamental pillar of a new society and construction. Inspired by the ideals of the Third Reich, the government embarked on a crusade to legally equalize extramarital children with those born within marriage, thus challenging social prejudices and promoting wider acceptance of these new family structures. In a passionate speech in 1944, Hitler himself underscored the importance of re-educating society, instructing writers and artists to avoid depicting the extramarital child as inferior. He banned any work that perpetuated this stigma, marking a radical turn in the cultural policy of the regime. 
This fascinating chapter of history offers a look at the extreme efforts of a government to shape social perceptions and family dynamics in a time of intense ideological transformation. In the heart of the Nazi regime, a love scandal resonated with echoes of ancient polygamous practices. Martin Bormann, Hitler's secretary and a prominent figure in the National Socialist Party, challenged social conventions by openly maintaining an extramarital relationship with the actress Manya Behrens, while still married. Far from hiding it, Bormann shared his happiness with his wife through letters, declaring himself incredibly happy being doubly married. The surprising part of this story is the reaction of his wife, who not only accepted the situation but also supported it. This episode not only reveals the personal complexities within Hitler's inner circle but also provides a window into the contradictions and ideological extremes that characterized the leaders of the Third Reich. How would society react to discovering this web of personal relationships in an era of imposed moral rigidity? This unexpected twist in the plot invites exploration of the depths of loyalty and convictions in tumultuous times. In the gloomy days of the world conflict, an intriguing dialogue between a powerful Nazi hierarch and his wife reveals a scandalous view of family and motherhood. The wife, in response to her husband's confession of having a lover, not only accepts the situation but proposes a surprisingly pragmatic arrangement that her husband alternate between her and his lover to have children each year, ensuring that he always has a woman available. Beyond personal acceptance, she suggests that at the end of the war a law be enacted allowing healthy men to have two wives simultaneously. This twist reveals a bold reimagining of social norms that could radically transform family structures. The story promises a fascinating exploration of how love, loyalty, and ambition intertwine at the highest levels of power during one of the most tumultuous times in history. In the era of the Third Reich, the imposed social and political norms reflected a drastic setback in women's rights and roles, in stark contrast to the liberating trends of the 1920s. Under the Nazi regime, men were encouraged to practice polygamy and maintain extramarital relationships, while women were relegated to an extremely subordinate and passive role. The ideal woman was seen as a domestic figure, confined to the home, dedicated exclusively to household chores, compliant with her husband's needs, and focused on raising children. To further cement this vision, the government took radical measures such as banning women from holding executive positions within the Nazi party, thus closing the doors to any form of female political empowerment. This narrative not only exposes the systematic oppression of women in a period of authoritarian control but also invites the viewer to reflect on the power struggles and civil rights in a context of extreme ideology. How did women react to these restrictions? What forms of resistance manifested within a society that sought to silence them? This is the backdrop for a hidden struggle, a story of courage in the face of adversity, which resonates with themes of equality and justice in any era. Despite the severe restrictions imposed on women in Nazi society, some managed to reach positions of notoriety and power, albeit in notably contrasting ways. Ilse Koch, infamous for her role in the Buchenwald concentration camp and her brutal and sadistic treatment of prisoners, and Leni Riefenstahl, the talented film director whose propaganda works glorified the Nazi regime, are examples of how power and perversity can manifest in extremely diverse forms. Simultaneously, it is important to highlight a peculiar nuance in the regime's gender and sexuality policies. Female homosexuality did not face the same brutal repression as male homosexuality, revealing an inconsistency in the Nazi oppressive practices. For gay men, the Nazi regime represented a period of absolute terror, a reality that contrasts with the somewhat less severe treatment of lesbians. This panorama offers an intriguing glimpse into the complexities of power, morality, and sexuality within the Third Reich and raises deep questions about the nature of evil and ideological manipulation. How did these women, who lived under severe restrictions, manage to rise to the top of a deeply oppressive system and what does this say about the nature of power and gender? In the dark heart of the Nazi regime, a cruel campaign of hatred and persecution was unleashed against the gay community, labeled by government propaganda as an aberration against the laws of nature and a threat to the purity of the Aryan race. The Gestapo, relentless and methodical, compiled in 1934 the infamous Pink Lists, exhaustive records that contained the names of homosexuals in each locality. 
Armed with this information, the Nazis conducted systematic raids on clubs and bars frequented by the gay community, where they arrested its members without offering any legal guarantees. Once in custody, detainees were subjected to blackmail and brutal torture, with the sole purpose of forcing them to betray others, thus perpetuating a vicious cycle of arrests and persecution. This dark period highlights not only the brutality of the regime but also the resistance and resilience of a community harassed by terror. The story of these raids and the struggle to survive under a relentless regime of terror is a poignant testimony to the fight for dignity and identity in one of the darkest chapters of modern history. From 1938, the Gestapo implemented one of the Nazi regime's most cruel policies, sending gay men to concentration camps. Identified by a pink triangle embroidered on their prison uniforms, these men faced daily humiliations and unimaginable torment. This cruel fate highlights the Nazi obsession with controlling and molding the sexual lives of Germans to achieve their goals of perpetuating a supposed superior Aryan race. This chilling persecution, which lasted until the end of World War II in 1945, reveals the depth and brutality with which Nazism sought to intervene in the most intimate and personal aspects of human life. Reflecting on these facts, we ask ourselves, what do you find most shocking about the way Nazism manipulated sexuality? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you are interested in exploring more events that marked military history, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We will continue to uncover the traces they left in history together.